Feeling lost can be quite frightening. The world around you seems to be moving on while you are stuck, unable to solidly clutch the things that are happening or that you so desperately desire. It's ubiquitous in a sense that it occurs to all of us, yet what may differ from one person to the other is in which aspect of life the sentiment arises. Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation, as you might have guessed by the title, presents this notion of disorientation in life and demonstrates the several manifestations of feeling lost with the help of two characters who seem at first glance quite dissimilar though they share rather striking mutual circumstances which ultimately joins them. We will take a look at the different manifestations in this film and see how the friendship that unfolds impacts the characters and their situations. To get the obvious observations out of the way, being lost in a literal sense is displayed to us from the second the film starts. Bill Murray's Bob is facing cultural, linguistic and physical barriers that repel him and prevent him from attaching himself to his environment. Scarlett Johansson's young Charlotte undergoes similar conditions, though in comparison to Bob, she actively goes out into the bustling city of Tokyo, visits culturally sacred places to comprehend how her surroundings behave and to seek attachment. Through her eyes we see the singularities of Japanese culture. However, despite her efforts to discover and understand, she must realize it's nothing she truly fathoms and is deeply saddened by it. Lauren? Charlotte, hey! Hey! Oh my god, how's Tokyo? It's great here. It's really great. Um, I don't know, I went to this shrine today. Mm -hmm. And, um, there were these monks and they were chanting. And I didn't feel anything. You know? And, um, I don't know, I, I, I even tried Ikebana. And John is using these hair products, I just... I don't know who I married. How Bob and Charlotte react to their environment depicts a realistic parallel between the old and the youth, in which the old are considered creature of habits, so accustomed to their familiar environment that change is perceived as threatening and uncomfortable, and the youth as people with inquisitive nature and lust for adventure who are continuously are in search of the new. Hence, it is not surprising that Bob yearns to leave the country as quick as possible and only sees himself residing inside the hotel when he's not working that provides most of what he is accustomed to. To that end, the hotel's lounge Bob and Charlotte often spend time in resembles a place less foreign with people who speak a language they understand and acquit themselves as they do. This also happens to be the place where they meet and the one they frequently resort to. As Bob describes, eluding being lost in an environmental, extra-personal sense is an easy task. You can simply leave and escape from the unknown, but you take nothing with you. All the invaluable experiences are left buried. So, you having a nice time? Can you keep a secret? I'm trying to organize a prison break. I'm looking for, like, what, an accomplice. <laughs> We'd have to first get out of this bar, then the hotel, then the city, and then the country. Are you in or are you out? I'm in. Okay. I'm gonna pack my stuff. Get your coat. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> I hope you've had enough to drink. Yeah. It's gonna take courage. It requires a person like Charlotte, who is outgoing, communicative and above all, adventurous to ignite Bob's dying flame, to take him by his hand and to charge into the lively streets of Tokyo, meeting interesting and spirited people along the way he has avoided so far. They garner impressions of foreign culture they still aren't able to fully relate to, 
but it's their mutual process of discovery that especially opens up Bob's narrow view as he indulges himself in miscellaneous activities, enjoying and embracing the things he doesn't know, for if we stop seeking, we feel lost. So, uh, uh. Uh, so, uh. Uh, so, uh. He discovers the healthy Japanese way of eating and wants to adopt it, learns to cherish the extreme politeness of Japanese people and ultimately doesn't even want to leave, contrasting his initial state of mind. I don't want to leave. Charlotte teaches him that running away from foreigners, thus amplifying the aforementioned repellent forces of your environment, only exacerbates the feeling of being lost. We have to dive into it and make attempts to appreciate and to grasp it, even if we fail at the latter. Charlotte too realizes this soon after her night with Bob and is no longer let down by her inability to relate to her surroundings, as she simply discovers not with the aim of ultimate understanding, but with the aim of assimilating as much as possible during the process. Have you ever asked yourself while watching Lost in Translation what Charlotte and Bob actually want? What do they genuinely desire? The film doesn't make it clear, in fact, it depicts them as characters who meander aimlessly through life. And what made them come to Tokyo in the first place? It's Charlotte's husband and Bob's agent, external forces that dictate the lives of our protagonists. And while those protagonists perhaps appear to be utterly different on the surface, the two characters actually live through the same stage of life. Charlotte has just married and graduated, as opposed to Bob, who has a long, fruitful career behind him and currently finds himself in a lengthy marriage. Yet, they are both somewhat adrift, trying to find ground again. In many ways, the two individuals mirror each other. Her nebulous view on her future career sees its counterpart in Bob's declining path from what has been years of renown. Their mutual directionless outlook doesn't only become manifest in their working lives, but also in their relationships. Her preoccupied husband leaves Charlotte emotionally confused and isolated despite their physical proximity and their young marriage. Bob, in contrast, is so out of sync with his loved ones, partly due to their great distance, though he admits the idea of wanting to take time off from them, for having been married for this many years is cumbersome. One could argue that Charlotte hasn't yet lived life, while Bob has. She's about to set foot on a pebbly journey, while he has stepped off of it. Their circumstances make them feel lost just as their environment does. There's nothing to latch onto except... Overcoming the feeling of being lost in a deeply personal aspect of life is unlike that in an extra personal aspect. It's much more complicated and the how often doesn't even come with a clear answer. However, to me, it seems that vanquishing this feeling in an outer level is done by both in the film inevitably impacts the struggle with it on the personal level. We see Bob call his wife for the first time after his adventurous night with Charlotte, telling her about the people and the culture encircling him. Charlotte, though, has no one to talk to except Bob, hence why the impact and change may not seem evident. Instead, her tie to Bob is strengthened, which in turn accounts for the impact, as he acts like a temporal anchor in her life. 
instilling hope and offering solid ground in a time of despair and solitude. Does it get easier? No. Yes. It gets easier. Oh, yeah? Look at you. Thanks. <laughs> The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. Yeah. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be. You know? I tried being a writer, but I hate what I write. And I tried taking pictures, but they're so mediocre. You know, and every girl goes through a photography phase. You know, like horses. You know, take uh, dumb pictures of your feet. You'll figure that out. And I'm not worried about you. This is why the two have such a hard time separating in the end. It's the sturdy bond between them that fights against its imminent shattering. A bond that has developed over just a couple of days, but proved to be most seminal to them, for they have not only got to know and love a stranger, but they have given them a direction once again in life, during a time where it was most needed.